Welcome back to Plague Size Studios, everyone. Today's video is another one that's been a long time coming. Uh, if you look around the comment sections on this channel, you might notice a couple of things. Number one, it's not a complete cesspit like a lot of YouTubers are. Um, we are building quite a nice little community here, and uh, I think that is because of the niche technical type audience, which is a good thing. Uh, another thing that you'll notice undoubtedly though is that I respond or acknowledge about every comment that's left and uh, that is partially because of the size. I do have that um, privilege to you know, be able to sort through that amount of comments and because of that I have read all of your concerns and all of your uh, suggestions for the channel and one of them particularly aligned with one that I um, voiced in the latest quarterly update and that was that the visual quality kind of sucks. Um, and it's gotten worse since we've moved. For those of you that watched some of the, or, uh, the earlier videos, you might have noticed that comparatively this apartment, the lighting is just terrible. I'm using the same uh, Samsung Galaxy S7 camera, but whereas in my other bedroom uh, where we shot before, I had a light uh, window about mm, three times from my arm. Uh, reach and you know that would fill the room fairly well and wouldn't really need anything else lighting wise here uh, It's about 20 feet away it is and I have uh, my Balcony blinds completely open. So we've got everything we can but everything else is just you know warm colored lights on a tan background And it's not working very well um, Also the visual quality is not great because of the camera and uh, that's something that I did voice that I wanted to upgrade ASAP and uh, well it just so happens that I can't really justify a computer upgrade right now uh, due to the, the games I'm playing I'm able to run them uh, fairly well and some of the other stuff I'm wanting to get to on Xbox anyway and the guitar that I was hoping to be buying within the next couple of months probably isn't going to be ready for at least another six months to a year so um, it just so happened that now was a pretty good time to go splurge on a camera so I did and this is what I ended up taking home. This is a Sony A6000 23.4 megapixel mirrorless and uh, it was about pretty much right up my alley what I was looking for although I was initially debating between a couple of other models so it came down to a Canon and Nikon model that were around $450 to $500 and I was more or less set on buying one of the two. Um, after fiddling around with them in a store I didn't really like the Nikon due to the user functionality. When it comes to stuff like guitar amps, uh, gear, even computers, I really like fiddling with settings and uh, that's part of the fun user experience to me. When it comes to cameras, because I'm using them not more as a hobby, though I, I hopefully I can get into it more as a hobby, but for video production, um, I want to waste as little time as possible to get a good image and go with it, move on. The Nikon was not exactly conducive to that sort of methodology, and I did like the Canon, but the feature set wasn't exactly what I was looking for. Turned the corner in the store, and I happened to see a Sony display, with this being in the center. And after playing around with it with a little, bo uh, little while, looking through the viewfinder, playing with some of the settings, the um, autofocus looked pretty good, played with the different scenes, the filters. I was basically sold, and for only a hundred dollars premium of what I was planning on spending, I feel like I got more than enough features out of it that will make it a um, lasting camera for not only the channel but for you know maybe hunting and of course all of those delicious macro shots of uh, the food that I cook. But more likely, it's going to be like petals and, and and nerd stuff like that. So. Um, this video, I'm just going to kind of give my first impressions of this. Of course, we're going to do a comparison to see how this thing uh, challenges my Galaxy S7 camera. You would think it would destroy it. Let's hope that is the case. Um, and of course, this will be the camera we're going to be using from now on for the channel until I upgrade, which hopefully won't be a for a long time from now. Um, before we get into that, I guess I'll just go over the base feature set of this thing while, I, while you look at uh, some B-roll of the video and the camera itself. Now I've had to guess the audience of this channel probably isn't going to be super familiar with the technical specifications of uh, cameras and the only reason that I'm somewhat familiar with them is because of physics and optics classes that I've taken over the years, um, which is kind of why I knew generally what I wanted in terms of F number for the lens and, and all that good stuff. In terms of a sensor, like I said, we're looking at a 24.3 megapixel uh, sensor that can film in 1080p 60 
uh, frames per second, which is very good because that means we're going to be upgrading frame rates. We can do it right now, but there is a file size limitation on the phone that will reset itself every 10 minutes and it gets very, very annoying to uh, start and stop or try to edit that out if there's a blip. Uh, this one is, is a bit longer, so that won't be nearly as pain, of, pain in the ass as far as I can tell. And um, I think 60 frames per second looks a lot better on here than it does the phone anyway. And of course, for the cinematic look, we can always f uh, film in 24 frames per second, which might be cool for some playthroughs or other, uh, you know, type of real-time stuff that I'd do. I had thought about, instead of putting the money towards something like this, putting it towards a 4K camera. And... Um, what it seemed to me was that the sensors, although they can detect 4K or output 4K, the film didn't really look any better than 1080p here. That really had to come down to the uh, bit rate of the video that was coming out. So to me, 1080p on this looks better than a lot of the 4K cameras out there. Of course, that's always compounded with the fact that YouTube's bit rate is astronomically low compared to what it probably should be. And of course, that's to save on file space. They are the biggest video server in the world, so it makes sense, but um, I feel like if they just upped up 1080p videos, it would look better than 4K does now on a lot of stuff, which is why I output in 1080p 60, even if it isn't utilizing 60 FPS at all times, um, because of that bitrate uh, bump. And of course, we'll look into looking, um, you know, exporting in different resolutions and frame rates as that becomes more of a problem, but for now, 1080p 60 should work for us just fine. In terms of other tech specs, we have a 16 to 50 millimeter uh, lens that comes in the box. Of course, you can buy other units with uh, greater zoom and different F numbers associated with them. It is rated up to a, about 26,000 ISO, I believe, um, generally from what I'm shooting at, about 4,000 to 6,000, sometimes up to 7,000 looks fairly good. So you probably don't need to hit that high, but some of these um, settings on here, you do have a very fast shutter speed, so you may need it uh, depending on your exposure. But I would say for the average Joe, you know, it's not going to be needed. Another one of the features that sold me on this versus some similarly priced units was the 179 point focus system uh, that it has, including a like 29 or 39 uh, different areas of contrast. And that makes autofocus happen a lot quicker, and the final uh, image does look a bit sharper because of it. Uh, between the comparisons that I've seen. Being the type of content creator that I am, going between this type of face-to-face -face view to really up-close shots of guitars and um, moving around, and especially being a one-man operator, that sort of functionality is definitely worth the price tag to me. Other than that, the viewfinder is functional, uh, works really well. The little LCD screen to preview and, and work through is also pretty, pretty good. Uh, you can flip it out, although the I would have preferred it to come out that way. Uh, it is what it is. I'm just glad that you can, you know, somewhat maneuver around a little bit, which means that I can't see myself uh, still, which is a bit of a problem. But uh, it does have HDMI out next to its USB plug, which is nice. So I guess you could, you know, hook up an external screen if you want to see real time. Not quite there yet. We're not doing too much uh, complicated stuff as of yet, so it's not too big of a deal. Uh, battery life, from what I can tell, is uh, anywhere around five hours. If you're doing stuff continuously, I'm sure uh, shooting is going to look, you know, going to drain it quite a bit more. It's going to make it look a lot worse than what the paper says. But um, I think it's going to be plenty. You might want to buy the spare batteries. And um, other than that, I think it should work quite nicely. One of the other issues with this thing versus some of the other competitors I was looking at is the lack of a traditional um, mic jack and because I'm wanting to put a, a boom mic on this eventually, some type of shotgun mic for when we move it around. You're going to have to buy one of the, uh, Sony's proprietary units, which may or may not suck, depending on which one you get. And they're going to be a bit more expensive than the competition. Um, that is unfortunate. It does have built-in audio, and we will see what that sounds like compared to the uh, built-in audio on the phone and the mic solution I'm using right now. The end goal is to have a lavalier, which um, I'm trying to do this you know, one at a time so we can kind of evolve the channel in that way. But um, I figure for the time being, we'll just stick with what we have and uh, cross that bridge at a later date. All right, so that's all well and good. Um, let's just see how this thing looks and stacks up next to the phone camera. And here it is, the Sony a6000 shooting indoors with less than optimal lighting. Uh, it's about the best settings I'm able to come up with right now, given the poor lighting in here. Do have a, a desk lamp going to solve some of the issues right now, but... 
Uh, any of you that are familiar with photography know that indoors you're just going to need to flood the place with lighting. Um, outside the video does look quite crisp without doing hardly anything to it, but uh, you're fighting shutter speed and ISO and all that good stuff in here. But even then, um, I think it is a stark improvement over the cell phone, uh, which we were rocking earlier. And the best part is I get to have it handy for notes and that sort of thing. Um, also have a dedicated, you know, camera rig that I can just move around and, and offload onto the PC when I need it. Um, right now you're hearing the camera's built-in microphone, which I think is pretty good, all things considered. I would like an, um, a different boom mic, some type of shotgun microphone later down the road, but uh, for mobile stuff, I think it'll work for the time being. The camera does have a bunch of really cool built-in features, uh, including filters and effects like um, making the color pop and uh, some monochrome black metal looking filters, which will definitely be useful in upcoming playthroughs and uh, covers and that sort of thing, which will be really cool. Um, but overall, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Um, for a camera noob like me, I was able to rip out the settings with uh, within, you know, 30 minutes to an hour just playing with it, which isn't too, too bad. And um, I know I'll get better as I'm more familiar with the camera and uh, the type of lighting conditions that it can affect. And um, that's just something I'm going to have to learn as I get uh, further into this. You know, cell phone cameras are kind of optimized to change their exposure and all of that. Um, as they move in and outdoors, whereas this is a uh, less handheld, but you'll end up getting a better shot and obviously the sensor is more capable and all that sort of thing. So for the time being, this is kind of the look of the channel. Um, of course, I'll, I'll have uh, some lighting rig updates eventually, and you'll probably be able to see it as soon as I, I get to it. But a little side lamp that's uh, flooding the ceiling with light is, is doing a pretty decent job as well. So yeah, I'm happy with it. And um, I'm sure throughout this video, and now you'll be seeing some B-roll of different footage and uh, uh, pictures I'm taking with this thing. To be a sub $1,000 mirrorless camera, I'm, I'm very happy with it and I'm um, sure it will serve the channel well going forward. So um, if any of you photography experts out there have any suggestions, I'll definitely take them because um, like I said I know how to do the theory on paper, uh, but as far as applied photography, eh, I'm a complete noob at it. So yeah, um, I think it definitely looks better already, but I know it'll continue to look better as I get better at this sort of thing. I'll, I know I'll get a, a separate lens for different occasions as well, maybe even uh, one for you know this sort of face-to-face -face contact. And um, like I said, it'll be a platform to build on and make the channel better as we go. So hope you enjoyed that, and uh, let me know if you have any feedback or ways to make it look even better. Thanks for watching. Bye.